Hi everyone, welcome back. Okay, February chit chat stationery, uh, maybe books. I'm not sure. We'll see where this goes, but I do have some updates for you because February and well, January and February were just kind of crazy months for me. Lots going on, and I'm gonna be honest. I really haven't been able to journal a lot. I haven't had a whole lot of time to sit down and just journal. Uh, my usual journal times are while my daughter naps and my daughter has now entered a new phase where she doesn't want to do that. And she'll just go, go, go well into the evening. And then by the time she goes to bed, I am just tired and I don't want to do anything. So not a lot of progress in terms of, uh, straight journaling time for myself, but I do try to write something here and there. I'm still in my traveler's notebook, the camel standard, and I changed out my charm to go back to simplify just because that's kind of what I have right now. Um, I just didn't want my squirrel like that enamel one to break any further until I can fix it. And I am currently in journal 156 did have fun decorating the cover. I'm just having fun enjoying like all my favorite things and stickers and all that. Just ever since I just let that mentality of, you know, oh, I got to hoard that sticker for something. Yeah, I'm just going to stick it on the stuff now. And uh, that's been nice. So, I mean, I guess it kind of looks like I've journaled a lot. A lot of it's just photos because I've just been printing photos and adding it in. So there's that. And oh, I do want to give a quick shout out to two wonderful people in my life who they all kind of came around my birthday weekend and it was well timed. Um, my friend Holly sent me this handmade ridicule. How amazing is this? She handmade this. She had posted it on her Instagram and I so admired it because I'm like, I don't know how to crochet. I can crochet like a line, but I'm not, I don't know how to read pattern directions for like knitting or crocheting. But this is absolutely amazing. And I had no idea that she was going to send it to me and she did. And it came right on my birthday weekend. I am absolutely just, I love this. I, I, I'm going to cherish it. And it's so Jane Austen. Somebody handmade this. This is so cool. Talent of people. I just, I can't even put into words. So I'm very uh, grateful for this. And I'm grateful that uh, she sent this to me as uh, a wonderful gift. It's currently sitting in my desk right now. Um, and I'm going to somehow try to put my writing box nearby it. So it just kind of like goes together. And you can bet your bottom dollar that the next time I go to the Jane Austen Festival in Bath, England, this is coming with me. And I just now have to sew a whole outfit for myself to go with it. But in the interim, I'm just going to enjoy this and somehow figure out how to use it but oh, it's just wonderful so uh shout out to her i'm so thankful for that and then also my friend justice very kindly sent me a galen leather insert that she had that she had gotten a replacement for she has a whole video on this so you should check out her channel and uh, she had a spare because this one had a damaged pocket. One of the pockets was completely missing, like it just fell out. And I had asked her, um, just out of curiosity, because I'd always been interested in getting a leather insert, uh, of how she liked it, does she, you know, enjoy using it, and um, I believe this is the Crazy Horse Leather. It's already well aged and loved, and I, I love that. I love aged leather. And uh, she said, you know what, I'll just send it to you. And if you like it, you can keep it. 
And sadly, because I haven't really had a whole lot of time to journal, I haven't even set this up in my um, my journal. So I'm really hoping that this weekend I get a chance to just get this in here and get that established. But in the meantime, I just have it sitting in my brown traveler's notebook covers just so it just wasn't homeless. <laughs> but uh, so she very kindly sent that to me and oh, it's beautiful. And I went out and got... Uh, some materials to actually fix the pocket since it was completely missing this pocket and then I think a couple of the other pockets were the like the lining was already coming apart so I don't know if you can see that but it's kind of got this darker brown lining on the inside to fit or to kind of match the shade of the leather I couldn't find the lining to match that exactly um, my resources are kind of limited so I had to just go with whatever Joanne's had and um but I did manage to actually fix it and that's the lining color that I have but I mean you know it's the inside so you really can't see it uh so I reinforced the lining with the kind of like that cell uh iron on adhesive stuff that you put on fabric I don't sew a lot and if I do I hand sew so I don't know the proper lingo but I bought some of that I ironed it onto the lining and then I glued it in with a leather fabric glue that's very highly rated uh, which is also waterproof I guess uh, and super durable and then that's what I did and this is supposed to be another card slot but I actually because I could just pretty much custom make my uh, pocket I just made it a way deeper pocket so I could actually in fact fit a narrow sticker sheet in there if I wanted to so you know if I'm gonna fix it I can might as well custom make it to my taste so there I have it new pocket all fixed I reinforced all the pockets in here so they are no longer loose and I'm really hoping I can get to using it. Um, so actually, I have some time today, so I'm probably going to do that right after this video. But shout out to my friend Justice, who wonderfully sent that to me, and I'm excited to use that. So that's one of the major updates to my journaling, is I'm going to have a leather folio insert for my traveler's notebook. And then I have a couple new journals. I know you're thinking if you've watched my videos a lot that I tend to be one of them like a very simplified journaler so why would I need this many journals? Uh maybe because I don't know <laughs> I just wanted new journals. Why does anybody start a new journal? I think it's partly because I don't have time to be in my personal journal that um like one of these is just kind of my way of being able to document stuff. Uh, anyway, I guess I could just get right into it. I'm gonna start a coffee log. Why not? I've gotten really into pour over coffee for Christmas. I bought my husband a whole pour over coffee setup because he had been using a French press for years and I thought, well, let's change it up, right? He loves it and I love it. I've discovered that I actually like drinking regular coffee and now we're just kind of into trying out buying beans from different local places and I thought wouldn't it be fun if we kind of kept track of you know where the beans are coming from what the brands are and all of that and then maybe we can look back and repurchase ones that we enjoy so hence this new journal this is an Paul Roman Martinez presents The Adventures of the 1900s. This is based off a game that I bought uh, from a booth uh, at the Emerald City Comic Con. And then they also made notebooks with these cool graphics. I had used one for a journal, a personal journal, and then I, uh, I had a second one blank sitting on my notebooks to be used shelf. And I thought, wouldn't it be great if I could pull that out and use it as a coffee log, which seems very appropriate because Seattle's known for coffee. I bought this pretty much in Seattle 
and it's got plenty of space. It's a hardcover blank paper. I haven't filled it out yet because uh, I haven't gotten around to that. But I have a couple bags, like I saved the bags from a couple things of beans that we bought and I'm going to transcribe that information. But I did note all the different things that I want to track. So the name of the coffee, the purchase date, the date that it was roasted, the origin of the beans, um, like the scent and the flavors that we're supposed to note, and then how we prepare it, what we taste, and then all of that. So I don't know, I just thought it would be kind of fun to just track that. So all of that information would be one per page. And because it's such a large notebook and we'll have so much space that I think over, I guess it depends on how much coffee we drink, but I'm hoping like within the year or so, we can kind of look back and be able to see all the different types of coffees that we drink. It's just a fun little side thing. I wouldn't even call this an actual journal, but uh, I thought that would be fun to, fun to do. And this knocks out another notebook from my shelf. I'm getting very low on notebooks to use up. I'm very happy about that. So that will be taken off the list of things to use. Speaking of, I also, um, I think at the end of January, I started creative writing again and then things got really busy. So I had pulled out a field notes notebook. I don't have many left. And if you've watched my uh, stationary minimalism videos, you know that I tend to keep a lot of these smaller notebooks that I've had for a long time as creative writing journals. So there was really no pressure for myself to use them. And I've now gotten to a point where I don't really have that many left. So I stuck that into a handmade leather cover that I made for myself for field note size. And that's what this is. And this is from like one of those camp series. So it came in a series of uh, three notebooks. And then I started a food diary because I really needed to get a handle of my blood sugars. They've been really high lately, I think because of stress, just due to everything that's been happening. And uh, I had been talking about to my diabetic educator and she had already encouraged keeping a food diary. So I thought this is the year I really needed to keep one consistently. I've tried in the past years and that's never worked. And I think that's mostly because I always chose notebooks that were too large to carry around and I would always forget it. So the key was to keep something that was small and I could just carry around with me, make sure I have it on hand when I'm eating so I can write down my carb count, whatever I'm eating, portion sizes, all of that. And I started to do that in this field notebook, but I'm running out of pages. I'm already more than halfway through because I also have notes in the back for, um, carb counts for things that I frequently eat so I don't have to constantly look it up. And it just became unrealistic for me to try to fill up so many field notes because first, I don't have that many left. I think this is like one of three or two of you know, so many. And um, you know, I can't, I'll just have so many notebooks. So yeah, this is the year for Hobonichi. <laughs> This is the year for Hobonichi. I don't know what it is. So I have a new journal. <laughs> Remember these, by the way, side note, uh, Orla Kylie for Target. Remember those? Did everybody just kind of jump in on this? Because it just kind of became this really big thing for the planner community for just buying these and using them for journaling supplies. Anyway. I'm using this to house my, um, my, my new food diary, which is a new A6 Hobonichi. So here's the story. For Chinese New Year this year, Gucci partnered up with Dormon. Dormon is one of my favorite things in the world because I grew up with him. I grew up with the cartoons, especially watching them in the morning with my cousins while we were in Hong Kong and China and it just brought back so many happy memories. I'm not a fan of Gucci though. I think it's really gaudy and flashy. Uh, but uh, 
marketing worked on me and I was very tempted to just dump some money on, I think I had like a wallet or something in my cart and maybe a handbag, but I really didn't need it. And the fact that I didn't like Gucci, I didn't want to spend that money on it. And I'm not trying to brag like, oh yeah, I can afford it and all that. Uh, the reason why, one of the reasons why stationary minimalism is so great is because when I'm not spending all that money on stuff, I can just save it and then dump it on something that I really love. And I was very close to purchasing something. But then I had this like idea of, do I really need it? No, you don't even like Gucci. So I started searching and it popped into my head that I uh, remember Hobonichi had come out with a Dormon cover. So I searched eBay and I found a seller who was selling it used. And for, you know, $60 coming from Japan versus the hundreds I was going to be spending on Gucci, I thought that's a good deal. So I got my Dormon fix and lo and behold, I just got it like a couple days ago and it's brand new. The listing actually said used cover. It's deceiving because it looks like, you know, it's made to look grungy, but it's actually uh, supposed to be that way, I believe. It came brand new. It even had all the wrapping and the price tag on it and everything. So I am very, very happy that I actually got this brand new uh, first. And also the shipping was incredibly fast. So I got my Doramon fix. I got the cover. I ordered the cover on cover from Jet Pens because I knew this was going to be on the way. And I ordered a Hobonichi Techo from Amazon. This is the English version. version. Here's my gripe about the Hobonichi. I don't care if it's in English or Japanese. These quotes are wasted space. I don't care about motivational quotes. I don't care about the so-called witticisms of people I don't know. I would prefer this to be completely blank so I can use it. I know people have suggested in the past, oh, just cover it up with washi. Well, if you have a whole year's worth of washi just layered right here, you just get this huge bulk on here. I'm not a fan of that, like space waster, but that's my gripe about the Hobonichi. That's, yeah, anyway. <laughs> this is my new food diary. It's the English version. And how I've broken this up is in the front, uh, because I started in February. I have January, which is like just blank pages at this point that I'm not using. I'm going to use it to keep track of carbs for things that I frequently eat. I've just started filling this out, and then I have it marked with a little tab. And then how I normally fill this out is I'll write my blood sugars at the top, and then I lists out all my meals. So breakfast, a snack, lunch, snack, dinner, and then possibly dessert or bedtime snack. And right after my morning blood sugars, I will also write down how I feel. So that way I know how my dinner has affected my sleep. So whether I slept well that night, uh, drowsiness when I wake up, things like that. And then I will also note how I feel after dinner too, because I've noticed uh, certain things that I eat will also affect how I feel. So that's kind of how I'm notating all of that. And maybe I can do a more elaborate video once I'm using this food diary more. Um, cause I haven't seen too many like diabetic journaling on YouTube. So I didn't really have a whole lot of resources of how I was, I was going to record all this. And then in the back I have breakfast ideas, lunch, dinner, and snacks. And some of it might just seem obvious, like, oh, have tuna and low-sodium stuff, cottage cheese and whatnot. When my blood sugar drops and I'm in a panic, or I have no time to even think about what I'm eating because I have to feed my daughter, I've got lots of things going on, the last thing I'm thinking is trying to think of a healthy meal to eat and put together for myself that's low-carb and low in sugar. So... I kind of need to have these things written so when I need to, I can just quick flip to the page and think, oh, okay, I have those ingredients on hand. 
that's what I can use to make myself a meal. Snacks are harder. Desserts are harder for me right now because I feel like for me, at least, it could be for many people that once I start eating sugar, I want sugar. Once I start eating a lot of carbs, I just want carbs and I just constantly want to crave that stuff. And I'm really trying to curb that. Having this as accountability of needing to write it down and see it on paper does make me hesitate when I try, when I want to reach for junk food. And um, it does make me think twice about how much I try to intake. So it's been really nice. I have gone pretty much a full month of February filling this out. I write my blood sugars and how I'm feeling with the red friction pen that I have uh, from my little drawer of pens and stuff that I still need to use up. And then I have a purple friction pen for all my food notes. So all my meals, snacks, and all that. And then all my notes for like carb counts. And then all my meal and snack ideas are written with this Papermint Ink Jillian Point 7. So this was part of a larger pack and it's just one of the last remaining colors that I need to use up. And that all sits in here. And I am just currently in search for a small calculator to keep, like a, just a small flat calculator to keep in here as well so I can use it to add up all my carbs. And do math because sometimes I have to divide things for portion sizes. So that's pretty much my food diary kit and the latest edition. And this is something that I fill out every meal, every day. Um, whereas the coffee one is just kind of like a fun little thing on the side for later. And those are the major updates, major new things that I have going on for journaling. My Some Things of Mine order came in, finally, the first or second week of February. And it was this little guy right here, which is all travel themed stamps. So it's very similar to it's part of the same series as this one. Or not series, but it's by the same maker. Um, what's this? One Day, Have Courage and Be Kind. I don't know what these are supposed to be called, um, but they're part of like that little series. And um, I just really want to travel themed things since nobody's going anywhere anytime soon. So adorable little set. I love these little stamps because I use them all the time. They're, they're easy to use because it doesn't require a whole lot of space and they're just kind of quick and small to kind of grab, stamp, and then clean and put away. I just feel like larger stamps tend to be a little bit more work. I don't know, maybe it's just me. And then I have this set too, which is like shopping. So that's what it looks like. I like how this guy looks like he's going to Costco. <laughs> so... I just thought that was a little fun thing. And I don't know what else came in that order. I can't remember, it's been so long. That and I haven't really been at my desk much. Oh, I got this too. Um, a Travel Day by Yamadoro, also travel themed. I kind of made my purchase worth it because it was so it was coming from so far and I had to pay all the shipping and then I paid extra shipping on top of that because of COVID and the holidays and it was to pretty much ensure that it got to me safely. So that was pretty much the majority of my order. Um, I think there were a couple other stamps too, I swear. Let me just double check. Oh, this guy. Oh my God. I love this guy. This little smiley face. I think it comes in two versions. I think there's like a taller version and then there's the short version. I bought the smaller one because I just like smaller stamps. And I love this guy. I love using him. I use him all the time. The only thing is it's like the stamp wasn't put on the right way. So when you stamp it looking at this, it's actually crooked and it's like the smiley face is like this way. So I actually had to test it so many times and I marked where the top is 
So in fact, it's this to make them look upright. Um, but I use this stamp so much. And then, oh, I also got a porcelain stamp too. It's my first one. Um, it's the little chair, if you can see. And that is to replace the classic -y chair stickers that I love so much. And I think this is my last sheet. So I thought, well, might as well just buy the stamp, which is kind of like a version of that. And then I can just make my own little chair stickers. And that's it. Those are my little stationary updates. If you have any questions, please let me know. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.